Shalalay! Here on Friday, February the 28th. I hadn't looked at anything. <laughs> I hadn't looked at anything. I just, um, I got a text from Chili's. So that's what I was like, Chili's, Chili's, right before I was turning on the camera. So then I just, I was, Shalalay! That was all that came to mind. Even though it is almost March. It'll be March tomorrow? Is it March tomorrow? No, it's a leap year. So, there's actually one more day this year. I think. I believe. Um, apparently, uh, Olive Garden, I don't, this is an internet story, so take it with a grain of salt. I didn't read it to, to verify, but you might look it up if you were born in a leap year, on a leap year. Because it said something about they were offering a free dessert to everyone who was born on a leap year for all the birthdays they've missed or something. So if you like Olive Garden and you were born on a leap year, you might check it out. But anyway, consumerism. Um, speaking of consumerism, <laughs> I got kicked out at 4 o'clock this morning due to overtime. But I carried all the way home with me a uh, shablam, a 12-pack of this. Um... So I'm going to test, taste test that uh, eventually today. I have my I have my helper, Minxie, here. She's grooming me. This is a process that you need to do before the camera turns on. Yes, we do makeup, hair and makeup before production even begins. You're terrible at your job. She's good at her job, just bad at timing, I guess, maybe? Anyway what we have today, and I had a few surprises when I went to uh, get my stand-up specials. I found two movies that were stuck over in a corner that I didn't know about. Um, how I did not know about them, because they're over there on my bookshelf, behind other movies that I have in fact grabbed, but what we have here is the last gasps of my uh, film comedy collection. This is the final one, it's not, this, this series was not nearly as long as my horror movie collection. I had 20 some of those, but apparently I'm way more into com, or way more into horror movies than comedy movies, but even though I love, I love them both, they're both okay. But anyway, so this is our pile. Uh, it's comprised mostly of stand-up specials from different people. A lot of Jeff Dunham, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> but, uh, most of the pile... <laughs> Anyway, the movies that I missed was The Replacements. Now, you know, I didn't think that I would really be into a football movie so much, um, but I know what I saw of this, I did enjoy. And obviously, as you can see, it's still in the package. What's the date? Oh, they don't have a date on here. Um, but anyway. Underdogs become top dogs in this fun-filled, rough-and-fumble comedy that's the best football movie of the last few years, according to Larry Stewart. Stewart not... Patrick Stewart, Make It Show, Los Angeles Times. Uh, Make It Show, Los Angeles Times. That's somewhere between Patrick Stewart and Sean Connery, and both of them are shitty, so, hey. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Keanu Reeves plays Shane Falco, a washed-out All-American quarterback who guides a team of misfits assembled by veteran coach Jimmy McGinty, Gene Hackman, to replace striking pro players, a motormouth receiver, Orlando Jones, a merciless linebacker, John Favreau, a nicotine wired kicker, Rife, Rise, I fans? Is he a guy? I guess he's a guy. I don't know. Am I pointing at his name? Yes. Rife, I fans? I don't think, I don't know if I've heard of him. Um, maybe one of those I know his face more than I know his name. And more, line up along Falco for a drive to the playoffs. For for sultry support, there's cheer, cheerleader Annabelle Farrell, Brooke Langdon. I'm assuming that must be her right there. Uh, face maybe looks familiar. I don't know. Maybe it's just one of those where all the actors and actresses at the time kind of look the same. I don't know. Um, and her ex-stripper squad, Pain Heels, Chicks Dig Scars, Glory Lasts Forever, Falco tells his team. It's game plan, it's... They missed... They, there's a typo. It's supposed to say, a game plan that works to perfection. But it says, it's game plan that works to perfection. I'm, uh, you know... Mm -hmm. It's... It's... Game plan... 
I was like, that's why I was thrown off there for a second. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. A grid iron dirty dozen full of body slams and belly laughs. I don't know if I saw part of this. I don't feel like I've ever seen the entire thing, but uh, maybe I watched it on cable at uh, one of my friend's house, uh, either Jason or Robert. I don't know. Maybe because the same movies always would pop up. That's how I got into the craft. Uh, what was one of the other ones that always used to pop up all the time? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so whatever I, whatever I did see of this, I enjoyed. Uh, so I would say this is worth a watch. So I, I bought a football movie. So there you go. And a another comedy classic, another comedy classic that I have not watched in far too long, Three Amigos. Yes, I do own this. Good for me. I appreciate Oh, that's kind of cool. The disc. Like, can you see it has their faces on it? Kind of. And you're, you're, you can tell you're sitting on Doctor Who boxes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my tri, that, that's my tripod, I guess. Because professionalism, as always. Um, Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short, three, you know, um, veteran comedy actors travel a dusty road to adventure in the zany mix of sharp one-liners and clever sight gags. The Three Amigos are a silent screen comedy act who have seen better days. So has a remote Mexican hamlet which is being terrorized by a fierce bandit gang. Finally, in desperation, a native villager sends the actors a telegram asking for help. Thinking they're being offered a fortune for a personal appearance, the hapless trio arrives in Mexico only to discover this time they're dodging real bullets. Directed by John Landis, Animal House and Trading Places, here is an uproarious comedy about three lovable bl bumblers who are in way over their heads, but come what may, they'll always remain the three amigos. You know, and honestly, I don't remember exactly how this movie uh, pans out. I don't remember, the, I mean, I'm sure they win in the end because it's comedy. Not every comedy ends on a happy note. Um, let's, be, uh, let's be honest, Monty Python, correct? Um, <laughs> but I remember there, it's, it's, there's, there's crazy things in this movie. It's, it's somewhat, um, you know, somewhat, of course, you know, realistic. Uh, what's, what's that other movie that I never got, a sh that I haven't checked out yet? Um, the one, like, Jack Black's in it, I think. And, of course, Robert Downey Jr. Um, playing a black character. It's like, what do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? You know, because they think... It's, it turns out to be a real war that turned, you know, that they just think they're acting in, uh, and that's kind of the same setup as this. Um, but I remember, I remember there's there's crazy, ridiculous things that happen in this movie, like there there's the singing bush, <laughs> or, or there's there's like an invisible guy in the singing bush or something. Um, so it's it's not a, a, there, there's a little bit of ridiculousness along in this movie that's maybe uh, a little bit outside of what reality would be. Um, so there's kind of, you know, there's kind of some funny, like, in reality things, but then at least in, in terms of the, uh, the bur not the burning bush, it's the singing bush. Um, I don't, I don't want to give away what happens with the singing bush, but... <laughs> but just know there, there's some things in here that are a little bit maybe outside of you know, um, so, some kind of fantasy comedy kind of things as well. And it's a comedy classic, and you should definitely check it out if you have not seen The Three Amigos. So that is that is a good time. That is a good uh, end note for my movies, apparently. And now we will move on to the stand-up specials that I guess I don't really have much to say about. Um, so maybe this will go very fast. But uh, the first one I have is the Blue Collar Comedy Tour. I got into uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Bill Ingvall. It's Jeff Foxworthy and Bill Ingvall, in case you didn't know. Um, when I was a teenager, and I, I still have some of their cassette tapes. Yes, cassette tapes, children. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I used to listen to those all the time. I even, I even still quote every once in a while. Um, I, it was Pandelirium. This is a Bill Ingvall joke, by the way. Um, 
Billy and Paul joke. Because uh, he, he was talking about how the aliens wouldn't talk to us or whatever, and he's like, I understand why, because, you know, you, you know something some about, like, the craziest people on TV, you know, like, uh, it has to do something with our TV, and he's talking about, like, every time there's, like, you know, or he, he might be talking about how he's from, you know, the country or whatever, and every time there's a tornado, they interview, like, the craziest person or whatever, so every once in a while I'll say, it was pandelirium, and once I start that, I can't not quote the whole thing. So if you're ever around me and you hear me say it was pandelirium, just prepare yourself. Because it was pandelirium. I thought we'd be killed or even worse. I looked up just in time to see the Jenkins house go right over our roof and all I could think was Carolyn still has my casserole dish. So just, just know that is coming. The whole thing. Every time. I can't stop myself. But <laughs> so I knew Jeff Foxworthy and uh, Bill Ingvall before this whole thing came out. And I got to where, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of Ron White, uh, Tater Salad, Ron Tater White Salad. Wait, no, Tater Salad White. Um, <laughs> and they're the cable guys okay too, you know? So I, I enjoy all four of them. The, the, you know, the, they're not making a show together. like. They each have their own separate, you know, sets that they do. But all of them together, you know, it's a pretty good show. Um, I guess if you can stand the blue color, um, you know, kind of country kind of um, version of humor, which is which is just fine with me. You know, like I said, I like to laugh at many things. So some some people might 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 make it uh, think it's a little pedestrian, but. Um, Take the stick out of your ass and learn how to fucking laugh. You know what I mean? Um, it might be what, what do they what do they call low brow? It might be low low brow humor, um, but it's fine. You know, just party party with the party with the people down here on the f floor where the bodies have hit something like that. So yes, I do enjoy uh, these guys. Now I. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I've liked stuff that they've done separately, but honestly, I can't remember for sure about them all together and doing their sets together. Um, but I know I do. I do enjoy their their comedy, so um, I would at least say it's worth a watch. Now we're moving on to uh, Jeff Dunham territory, and I'm just going to show you right now. Boom! We got this many Jeff Dunhams. Um, I don't even. I'll just. I'll just do it from. Do it from the top. Uh, Jeff Dunham. These are my Blu-rays. Uh, Unhinged in Hollywood with, of course, good old Walter. I, re I remember Walter, and I kind of remember Peanut too. Um, I don't know this. Oh, that that's that's the Jeff, the Jeff puppet, I believe. Uh, he's in. He's in, he might be a new one for this. Oh, and Bubba. Oop. Bubba's behind the sticker here. <laughs> but uh. And of course, you know, um, Ahmed. Ahmed became a very popular character. Um, so in some ways, you know, Jeff Dunham might be considered kind of blue collar himself, you know, or the whole, uh, you know, patriotism America kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. Um, I, don't, I don't feel I'm expressing that correctly, but hopefully you understand what I mean. Um, I don't recall this one very well. For sure, which one this is. Um, but I do, you know, once again, you know, kind of kind of like with uh, with the spoof movies, like, there's always a couple jokes in there to make it entertaining. Um, but since this one doesn't really stand out to me, it's still in the plastic. I may not have watched it. <laughs> I may not have watched this one. I don't know. Because um, he, he had a couple of specials like on TV or whatever, and then I bought the DVD, or you know, I bought it on, on home. What do they call it? They used to call it something when it was VHS, like home 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 media something? I don't know. Whatever whatever it is I'm trying to say. So uh, I may or, not, may or may not have watched this one. I don't know. Um, I guess sometimes I feel because they're they're they're, they're the same characters each time. They just kind of they get up there and they kind of have their own, you know, set, and then they're like their own little character. Um, but I also have Minding the Monsters, 
Um, and you can see Walter and Bubba and Peanut and Ahmed and Jalapeno on a stick. That's, I, I remember him a long time ago because of that jalapeno joke. And I remembered Walter because he's the one that, Welcome to Walmart, get your shit and get out. You know, um, that's very prevalent to my life. Uh, very important. Um, you know, Peanut, uh, of course, was crazy. I remember him doing his little meow thing when he would do his... Uh, he's trying to say that, you know, the jokes go over the audience's head or whatever. And he just kind of, you see his little tuft of hair. He lifts up his hand and he goes, meow. Um, and then, of course, there was the jalapeno on a stick. Um, so that's his his famous joke. Um, oh, and it looks like Jeff Jeff is in there. Am I pissing you off, Fafa? So, oh, and well, I guess they all have costumes, because uh, Walter looks like Frankenstein. So Walter's kind of the grumpy old man. Uh, Bubba is the redneck drunk. Um, Ahmed is a dead terrorist. And Peanut is just kind of crazy and, like... Is it the Adderall? Is that what they give children who uh, who need to calm the fuck down, and maybe adults too? I don't really know. Uh, he needs he needs some whoop, something, cause he's like he's like uh, crack cocaine, coffee, and uh, a bang energy drink all put together. Uh, I don't know. Bang is the popular one. That's what I see people drinking now. Like it surpassed Monster and uh, Rockstar. Rockstar is the other one. Um, it's not a piece of plastic. On it. So I don't necessarily remember, I mean, it's it's fun for Halloween, I guess, uh, but I don't necessarily remember this being one of his stronger outings. Um, then we, well, I guess I should uh, maybe show this one next. Ta-da! Now I have light, because we go from Halloween to a Christmas special. Uh, let's see, we've got Ahmed, and we've got uh, Where to Go, I Lost It, uh, Peanut, and Jalapeno, on a stick, and uh, Walter. So... He, he changes up his characters every once in a while. Uh, these these are some of his main ones that he, you know, whips out every time. Um, it, maybe it's on one of these. There, there's a character that he only had, like, once that I remember. Um, and I don't really remember. He has, like, Sweet Daddy D, who has, like, a teeth thing that he goes... Or something with his teeth. Uh, but I think Sweet... Da oh! Bubba J. Bubba J's down here. Drunk off his ass, of course. Um... So they're a little dusty, um, but yeah, so he, he switches up his characters every once in a while, and he did have a uh, he did oh I guess it's Jose Jose Jalapeno on a stick. I didn't know he had a name. <laughs> I just thought that he was Jalapeno on a stick. Um, that's what I prefer to call him. That's that's uh, uh, my preferred name for him. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know I don't I don't remember this being once again one of his stronger outings. Um, but it's a very Christmas special, if you're looking for something to do on Christmas, I suppose. Um, and honestly, I can't really re I can't really remember, uh, for sure, which stand-up special is which. Oh, oh wait. I'll show that. I sh maybe I should be opening these. Uh, but we have Controlled Chaos. I don't know if I have all of his stand-up specials or not. Um... But as you can see, there's the usual cast of characters on here. And then there's this person over here in the corner who I don't recognize. That might be, uh, at one point, um, Ahmed had a, had a son or something? Had a kid or something? That might, that might be the, um, Ahmed's kid. It looks like maybe his face is a little, uh, you know. Where'd it go? There's a little, uh... Skeleton, skeletony. So, um, usual cast of characters, usual cast of craziness. Um, you know. So, uh, it's a good time. And what I found in here was, uh, well, I thought I thought it was a, I thought it was a, um, like a postcard kind of thing, but it turns out it's just kind of a flappy piece of paper with an advertisement on the back. I think I. Or somebody bought me those, or at least they got me Ahmed and Peanut. Um, I don't know if they made it over from the house, because they were on the couch. But I don't know. Uh, so I may or may not have those anymore. But on the back of this paper is the Ahmed mobile. But yeah, I thought that was... Uh... 
like a postcard that was in there, but it was not. It was just that. But that's still kind of a cool little addition to in there. And the last, okay, I swear, it's the last Jeff Dunham that I have. It's arguing with myself. Um, and this is probably, oh, here's uh, Sweet Daddy D on the back. I don't know if you can really see his teeth thing. He does like, oh, I guess it's not a teeth thing. It's the, the lips, the lips move up uh, when he's talking about that. Sweet Daddy D. Walter Peanut Jose Jalapeno on a stick. See? On a stick. Uh, Bubba J and Sweet Daddy D are all in this one. Um, so this this must not be one of his... This is a later one, because Sweet Daddy's in it. Um, so maybe Controlled Chaos is... No, because that has... I don't remember... Oh, and the Jeff Puppet is over here in the corner of that one. I missed him the first time around. Um, so I don't actually know what his, like, original one would be. But, because I don't think Sweet Daddy was in his original ones. I don't remember that character. Um, but once again, it's Jeff Dunham. Uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes it's fun because he'll have a little... Um, and I mean, maybe all ventriloquists do that. But he has, like, a little moment that, you know, like, maybe you can see it was... Um, like, in the moment, like, he came up with a good joke and he just kind of, like, ran with it. So, basically, that's why he called it arguing with myself. <laughs> is because he, had, he, he replies to himself in character. It's probably a little bit, maybe a little bit, you know, uh, psychopathic, sociopathic. Um, I don't know. Something. <laughs> but, yeah, he's able to, like, you know, reply to himself with the characters. Uh, and some of these have bloopers on them. Uh... This one has outtakes, so you can see, like, some of the stuff that went wrong, um, you know, um, and so, sometimes, like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a little treat for the, for the live audience, because then it's like, you know, you get to see the characters, uh, do some material that you didn't necessarily, you know, wasn't part of the show, because they're just basically giving Jeff crap the whole time. Um, all right, we're past Jeff, Jeff. Uh, Dunham, I almost said Jeff Foxworthy, and we're into Patton Oswalt territory. Um, I don't know why I bought this one necessarily, um, but this I I remember I remember um, no reason to complain. Uncensored award. I really don't know why I bought this. To be honest, I hate these extra little tabby things. They always trick me when I'm trying to open a freaking DVD. Um, because I don't remember this being part of, um, I don't know, maybe it was a party stand-up special? Or, it does say Comedy comedy Central at the top. So maybe this is one of the, I don't remember this being a classic one that I watched all the time. Uh, but I remember Patton Oswalt being um, very funny. So as far as stand-up goes, um, I can't necessarily remember why I bought this one or own this one. Um... But I know I've enjoyed Patton Oswalt, Oswalt, Oswald's stuff, and he is in the rebooted Mystery Science Theater as well um, on Netflix. So he's a good time. He's enjoyable. Okay. Now the last one that I do remember very well, uh, and it's another Comedy Central outing, it is uh, The Amazing Jonathan. Wrong on every level. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit, because on the last season, I don't know if that's coming back uh, this this summer, but it was uh, a show on NBC called Bring the Funny, and there was a there was a comedian slash he's a comedian slash magician, um, that's why he looks so crazy maybe or whatever, I don't know. Oh, Joker. He's on a card. That's what the, he's on a card. See, uh, but he he's a he's a comedian slash magician, and he's very good at what he does. Um, he's very good at mixing the, 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 the magic and the comedy, like, together. And the, the act that was on Bring the Funny, he had funny jokes and he had, he had funny, um, he had funny, like, reacting to things. Like, he, he was able to, um, improv in the moment, but he, I felt his act was more about magic than comedy. So, but... Uh, the Amazing Jonathan is amazing at both magic and comedy, um, so I would definitely, uh, th this is a, a, maybe a different kind of stand-up special, because like I said, there's, you know, 
magic involved if you enjoy if you enjoy magic and if you enjoy magic and laughing and hopefully you do um you know this is this is a good time now it's it's once again he can have some very crude humor uh he can have some kind of gross out humor i remember uh, you know spoiler alert i suppose uh one of his tricks has something to do with a uh, sword going through his tongue, and then like he twists the sword or whatever. So that's maybe more one of the the tricks than the jokes. But anyway, so we're we're done. You can if you if you muted me for this spoiler alert, you can you can come back. We're good. We're good. So um, he's a Las Vegas legend. Apparently, I know a couple years ago, I think he had a documentary maybe on Netflix uh, because he was having some kind of health scare or something. Um, so he doesn't go out on the road anymore, unfortunately, from my understanding of it. Um, it's just like when, you know, Naomi Judd had to stop being a part of the Judds. But, uh, get them before they're banned. I can't even get that out. That's the, uh, That's the, apparently that was the selection on Comedy Central at the time. Drawn Together. I love that show. And, of course, South Park. Good old South Park. Good old South Park. Oh, it's just a, it's just a pull out of this pullout is very effective, don't you lie to me, um, of all their shows that they had at the time. So maybe some very classic Dr. Katz. Dr. Katz. I, did, I guess, you know, sometimes I could, that was a show where he was a, he was a psychologist. He was a psychologist to like, um, you know, comedians or whatever. And they would come in and do their jokes uh, kind of do, kind of do their sets, uh, and then they would get animated, um, and uh, of course they, they would be kind of like little, you know, story, maybe a storyline or something, or him interacting with his, uh, uh, him interacting with his uh, other people. There it is, Doctor Cats, right there. It was very, it was very weird uh, animation. It was very shaky, um, but I, I remember enjoying the stand up. You know more than the, more than the, <laughs> the characters just being the characters, um, but anyway. So I got distracted by Comedy Central there for a minute. Um, he has a zaniacistic, uh, psychic Tanya right there. I cheated because her name's up here somewhere. Psychic Tanya, there she is. So, but he, this is this is definitely uh, definitely a very good stand-up special. I would say to to watch. So especially if you are into magic as well as comedy, uh, the Amazing Jonathan and uh, Wrong on Every Level, definitely something you should check out. Okay, and kaboom, we're done with committee movies. Um, so that's apparently all I have. I feel like I had more at one point. I don't know. I feel like I'm missing movies. I don't know. I've let people borrow movies, and then I never get them back. <laughs> Jason. And, uh... <laughs> I have no idea how many movies of mine he has. Um, or, like, some of them I've just, like, sold over time to get a couple extra bucks or something when I've needed it. So it's kind of like, oh, I, I like this movie. I'll remember to buy it again at some point. And it's kind of like, wait, do I already own that movie or do I not own that movie? So that's for any for any genre. So, yes, we've done my horror movies and we've done my comedy movies. Uh, the next selection, I can't decide if I want to do, like, my action films or if I want to do my TV shows. Um, so now that we're moving on from that... Um, if you have a, um, a preference of which one you would like me to do next, um, please just let me know, and, uh, I guess if something gets the most votes, it'll win, and that's what, that's the direction we will shoot off in, uh, next. Um, I get, you know, I guess I should keep with, I kind of want to, part of me wants to keep with films, because, uh, you know, I've been talking about films this whole time, um, then I also want to get to my TV shows. I think I'm, I think I'm more excited for my TV shows, maybe, than my. Uh, but I've, I've got some good action movies too. Some good action movies. Um, but anyway, and also as I said later today, I am also going to uh, drink some of this, the Dr Pepper and cream soda. So that'll be a taste test later. And tomorrow, I found out uh, Mom's plan. Um, we're leaving uh, for our mini vacay day tomorrow morning. Um, so the mini vacay day, 
will start this weekend, and it'll go through Monday. So uh, over the weekend, there should be, there should be, I haven't had problems with uploading <laughs> in a while. So, um, <clears throat> um, I guess technology is, has advanced far enough to where we don't have problems with that sort of thing. Because I, when I first started doing this, how many years ago, doing Vacay Day va uh, videos, like, th there was, you know, th there was like two or three days straight where I wasn't able to upload a video because the place we were in just didn't have strong enough internet. Though we do still run into that every once in a while. <clears throat> or having trouble for, with the internet. Maybe it was my maybe it was my laptops. Maybe I, at the time I don't know. Um, I feel like it wasn't because I would go to other places and it would work just fine. But whatever, <laughs> it's not me. It's you. That's what we like to say around here. Um, and me and my puppets. You know, the voices in my head. Maybe. But uh, so yeah, that is what I have coming up, and uh, I will see you for what I see you.